it's a complicated relationship I had with my dad and I didn't truly get to know him until I was 13, 14, 15. Hey, nice to see you here as Chris Van Beard makes his return once again. And thanks for checking out this conversation with Shaw Guerrero. This is in depth. It's a little personal at times and also a little bit emotional. And I know you're gonna love this as much as I did. And a big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you shop from over 600 cologne and perfume brands. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on cologne and cologne that maybe you'll get tired of wearing, Scentbird lets you try a new designer fragrance every single month for just 16 bucks. So that right there is what it looks like when it shows up at your door. Little twist, little spritz. Oh, that's good. I wish this was smell-o-vision. Let me show you what we're working with here. That's a 30-day supply of cologne. Like this is way bigger than those little samples you get at the department store. It's actually eight times bigger than those. So I get that it can be a little bit overwhelming to figure out like which cologne should I start with here. Scentbird has you covered. You can take this simple quiz on Scentbird's website and based on your preferences, your previous purchases, and your quiz answers, they're gonna help you find the perfect fragrance for you. So I'll show you a few of the ones that I've been wearing so the next time we see each other, you'll know exactly what I'll smell like. I've got four of them here, so we'll walk you through what I've got, starting with this one. This is John Varvatos XX by John Varvatos, of course. We've got Maritime Triumph by Tommy Bahama. Classic scent here, Fierce by Abercrombie & Fitch. And last but certainly not least, Silver Lake by Bentley. So normally it's $16 a month, but if you click my link down below and use the code CVV, they're hooking you up big time. They're gonna give you 30% off your first month, which works out to $11. The thing I just love about Scentbird, and I know you'll love it too, is the fact that you can rotate your fragrances. And you don't have to buy like a giant bottle. You don't have to drop hundreds of dollars on that giant bottle. It's just such a cool concept to have these at your disposal, you know, whenever you want. So again, click the link in the description, you'll get 30% off your first month. And you can also take that simple quiz there on Scentbird's website to find out which fragrances are best suited for you. Use that code CVV for 30% off your first month. You can be smelling as good as me. Mm. Oh my gosh, so good to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here, I can't even tell you. <laughs> I have talked to your husband, I've talked to your cousin Chavo, I've talked to your mom. Now it's finally time that I talk to you. I love it that you are the first person that has said my cousin. Everyone always thinks Chavito is my uncle. I'm like, actually, he's my primo. So like, yes, love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what a, what a family you come from, right? Thank you. Thank and you. I, uh, and I think, I think like I was talking to Chavo about his family tree and everyone doesn't realize that Eddie was his uncle. Yeah. It's insane. There were more like best friends, but like, yeah, for sure. It's like a funny little thing. They were so close in age. Yeah. Well, so good to have you on. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's great. You know, I've been following you on Twitter and Instagram for so long and so much of what you're doing now is so different. I think from what people are used to seeing you doing, like you're, you're deep into the burlesque world now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really trying. I'm definitely still, uh, climbing the ladder here in Chicago, but I love living in Chicago because the burlesque scene is just fantastic here and I'm hoping it'll lead one day to me competing that's like the next step is to you know go to burlesque hall of fame and try and you know get a title there there's a burlesque hall of fame oh yeah in oh, Vegas it's the please, whole thing teach us <laughs> I mean like I would just be will I the stage they have there is just huge and if you get a title there or even if you just say I've been accepted into the burlesque hall of fame to compete um like your chances for booking go through the roof and it's just such an honor and not to mention you get to meet burlesque legends there and it's like a whole networking event so it's insane well I don't know if everybody's been to a burlesque show so Shaw, if I went to one of your shows oh my goodness the eyebrows are raising here <laughs> what would we see I mean, you know what? I think the thing I love about burlesque is that you could see anything from, I think what people are used to seeing, like Adida Von Tees, 
or like everyone saw the movie burlesque, like where it's very glamorous. It's everything's bedazzled. Everything is very um, to a live band kind of thing. There's everything from that to the neo burlesque movement, which I particularly love where let's see what, what was like one of the acts I did. I was like a vampire and like, I like had a ceremonial knife and I had like fake blood and there was like, there was ass, there was titties, there was blood, there was all kinds of awesome stuff and it was lit. So for sure, we got to bring you to a burlesque show here in Chicago and I'll right. show you the next, ropes. Next time I'm in Chicago, I'm there. Sign got me up, you. this is happening. Sounds like there's a lot of like the wrestling world that would be similar to what goes on in burlesque in terms of just the showmanship. Absolutely. I, you know what, the first time um, I work with a burlesque mentor here in Chicago, Hot Tadri. Um, and what a producer. name. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hot Tadri. Um, she's insane. She's a producer and a, um, and a wonderful dancer herself. But when we were talking, um, you know, it was all about storytelling. And it's all about, you know, like spoon feeding the audience exactly what you want them to know and telling them exactly what you want them, what you want to tell them. And, um, you know, less is more kid, you know, do less and, uh, and have fun. And it was very much like the similarities between burlesque and wrestling are very similar. And I remember telling my husband about it and he was like, so it's wrestling, but you're just, <laughs> you know, it's way more sparkly and you're, and you happen to be telling a story as you're taking your clothes off. I'm like, yes. Wow. Indeed. Well, how did you first get like interested in this? So actually, um, it's no secret. I've come out um, very publicly about I've had an eating disorder and whatnot. And honestly, the ultimate epitome of recovery in my mind and the ultimate way for me to love my body was to put it on full display and to do something I'd love to do. I've been a dancer ever since I was a child. And so merging those two worlds seem like something really challenging to do. I did my first act as Austin Powers. And it was very funny. I had a whole like hairy chest and a whole thing. Um, and like I did a dance in Tidy Whitey's and morphed into a fembot on stage. And it, I was hooked. Absolutely. Wow. Hooked. Yes. Look, look, I think that that's a huge step. You're right. You're owning it. This is amazing. But that's a huge step to take to go. You know, I went from having an eating disorder to going, I'm going to do burlesque now. <laughs> and it's still a struggle. I mean, believe me, there are still some days where I'm struggling mentally with my mental health. And, and I'm like, God, the last thing I want to do right now is get on stage um, completely naked and like do this thing. But you know, it's at the end of the day, I always have the best time. It's always so empowering. And, um, and I love that burlesque. Um, it's getting better, like with highlighting more bodies, but when you go to like a burlesque hall of fame or you go to a burlesque show, you're going to see every single body type and, you know, you're going to see just so much of people's creativity and vulnerability because mm. they're bringing whatever they want to the stage and trying to communicate with you through it. So it's pretty cool. So your husband, Matt, better known to a lot of people as Aiden English, he's super supportive of this. Oh yes. <laughs> and, why, and, always... and why wouldn't he be? <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't mind. Um, I think the one, the, the only thing he's ever quarreled with me about it was um, when I keep getting shipments of just random crap. And he was like, what is this? Why do we have a flesh like bodysuit? Why do we have a, um, what's this leather harness thing? Do I need to know what this is? And I'm just like, it's for less. It's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, uh, it's never a dull moment in our house. <laughs> Well, you mentioned the struggles with your mental health. And in February, you posted that you had a mental illness crisis. You weren't taking any more bookings in wrestling. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling now? I mean, it's May as we record this. Yeah, um, I really appreciate you asking me. Um, I am doing better. Um, I don't think any, anyone ever fully heals from mental illness. I think we're, um, especially with anxiety and depression, PTSD, that's what I officially got diagnosed with after I posted that. Um, I had a really scary episode when I was in Texas, I was supposed to do a mission pro wrestling show and, um, I just, yeah, I knew I needed to t step aside cause my mental health was completely breaking. I got diagnosed that, um, like two weeks later with all of those fun, fun things. I just said <laughs> the anxiety, depression, PTSD, and I'm on medication now. I've never been on medication in my life. And honestly, it's helped me so much. I'm going to therapy every single week and it's really fucking hard. <laughs> um, but 
you know what, I, I feel better and I'm just really focusing on things that, um, maybe are not as triggering for me as wrestling can be. Sure. So, so wrestling is a trigger point for you. It is. It's really rest. I want to be very honest that wrestling has been a huge blessing in my life, obviously. Sure. Like it's always been the thing that puts food on our table from me being a child all the way to now, like a, even up to when my husband was in WWE, that's all I've known. Um, but with it, uh, with me wrestling comes so much pressure, uh, so mm -hmm. much expectation and, and even then I just, I think I put so much pressure on myself because I have just the hugest, hugest shoes to fill that I just, um, it was getting to an unhealthy point for me. And, uh, I, I keep trying, I really, really keep trying to like be a wrestler and be the wrestler everybody wants me to be. But I'm, I think I'm truly, honestly, very content with like my skills on the microphone, doing managerial stuff, announcing commentary. I love that stuff. That's where I feel more at home. And, uh, hopefully maybe the wrestling world will still have me. I don't, nobody could possibly expect anybody to be Eddie Guerrero. There's no way that anyone could expect you to be your dad too, though. I don't even know how he was Eddie Guerrero half the time. I'm just like, he, my dad loved this business so much. I mean, he, he was constantly thinking about wrestling and, um, you know, yeah, no one can be him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, there's there's two, it's, it's difficult, right? Because he's one of the greatest wrestlers to ever put on boots, to ever step into the squared circle. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, that's just obvious. I was just stating facts here, right? So that's obviously very tough to live up to. And when your last name is the same last name as his, I think people might think, well, you've got to be at least, you know, half as good as him. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was getting pretty overwhelming in, in good, in good ways. Um, like, I think when I announced I was going to come back and I was training again, um, like I, I was having a lot of bites from promoters, which is so, so very humbling, very exciting, but they also wanted to put me in very top positions, which mm. I was, that's amazing. But I was also like, yo, I haven't wrestled in six years. Like I was feeling very overwhelmed. And then there is a lot, um, how do I want to put this? Uh, I think my first, so when I first went into wrestling, I went into the largest company in the world, the most yeah. elite company in the world, which is like, I'm, I know I'm very privileged with that, but with that came the biggest amount of pressure and just, it was just so intense and not to mention the Guerrero way, the way we're raised, we go hard or you go home. Like, it's just, we have a very tough family to grow up in and high expectations just in the family. And so when I was training to be able to come back and make this wrestling comeback, I was having panic attacks before I would go in just for a training session, just to train supposed to be super fun. And I was just like, like panic attacks were before and after almost every time. And it was just getting so much so hard. And when the bookings were starting to happen, I was just completely overwhelmed. Do you think this so. is pressure you were putting on yourself? Absolutely. I think part of it, the majority of it was pressure being put on myself. But then there's also this other part, point where people are expecting like, like, yeah, she's a great, she's going to be good. And I'm like, it doesn't yeah. work like that. Like, and even then, like my dad had like years of wrestling experience before he was, you know, on TV, like he was constantly wrestling. And so, and for me, like, thankfully I have other passions in my life that yeah. I have devoted my time to and, um, and they're not as triggering for me. So, yeah. yeah. Did you have a chance to talk? I'm sure you've talked to Chavo Guerrero about this. Not only does he share the same last name as his father, and he's a second generation wrestler, shares the same first name as him too. Like there's a ton of pressure on him. Oh my God. Yes. And you know what? Like Chavito has always been wonderful with me and has completely understood um, when I vent to him about, you know, like our family's crazy, man. He's like, yeah, they are. <laughs> and, um, and I mean, honestly, what we mostly talk about is, you know, just surviving in our family <laughs> and how, how to, you know, um, I guess be a modern person within our family and also like go after what you love in our family. And I'm so proud of him. Like he, he's just kicking all the ass and taking Hollywood by storm and, uh, yeah, forever proud.
Probably yeah, he's true. doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes in Hollywood that not everybody's yes. aware of. Like he's the stunt coordinator, wrestling coordinator on Young Rock right now. I know. And I'm just like, get it, man. I don't, I, and he has his beer and he has like, I, he has so many projects in the works and um, we're so proud of him. Um, and, you know, I hope, I think my family's proud of me too. I think I've been very <laughs> similar with him. I've taken a road, um, not really traveled, yeah. uh, especially in a family that's a uh, highly, really, highly religious, obviously we're Hispanic and, um, burlesque is not a, <laughs> an easy pill for some family to swallow. <laughs> when you were in WWE <laughs> developmental, were there other second or third generation stars there at the same time as you? So Charlotte Flair um, came in uh, right when we were transitioning into NXT mode. And so I kind of got to work with her for a little bit. She is another very strong, badass woman um, that I love to watch. And um, I mean, yeah, there was, I mean, other uh, second and third generation wrestlers. I mean, um, I got to work with, um, you know, uh, Ricky Steamboat's son and whatnot as well. And I mean, um, Wes Briscoe and, you know, just all kinds of generation kids. And um, yeah, the pressure though, we, we all related to the pressure, even if it wasn't outright like said to you, it was implied a lot. Yeah. Whose decision was it to not use your real last name? I mean, you worked under the name Raquel Diaz, which <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't see. I feel like if you went into developmental now, you would be Shaw Guerrero. It would be different. Um, yeah. I remember what I was told, and I won't say who said it, but um, they were just like, well, you know, if you suck, we can't drag your family's name through the mud. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I understood that. I was just also like, you know, that's the whole, like, they never said anything that I needed to be as good as my dad, but there was all kinds of little things like that all the time. And that was kind of hard to ignore. And so, um, yeah, I, I, and that was pretty much like day one. I was like, okay, pressure's on. Don't suck. Yeah. So, wow, and wrestling is... is hard. Wrestling is hard, man. Like it's so much like psychology, I think. And not to mention natural ability that you hope to God you have. Sure. So when you left NXT, were you done with wrestling at that point? Uh, I think, God, um, yeah, I think I was pretty broken. Uh, I was just like so um, disappointed in myself and I felt like I failed my family. I felt like I embarrassed them and, uh, you know, I gave it my fucking all. I really did. I, um, I was with the company for three years and I was told it was going like, I was doing good and yeah. And then, um, when I asked for a, a break because my neck was so messed up, um, they just wanted to go a different, a different direction and mm. wish me the best of my future endeavors as yes. we've all heard. And right. <laughs> so at that point where you like, all right, wrestling's in the rearview mirror, I'll do something mm. else now. I did actually, like, I think I was in such like, I, I don't even know, like halfway shock. And I was just like, I think I just felt so not good enough to perform in any capacity. I went right into veterinary nursing school. Like that week I like signed up and like freaking, um, got to work on all my prerequisites that week. And, um, like three months later I was in a veterinary nursing program. Wow. So, did you, did you finish the program? I was about two months out from finishing and I dropped it all to perform. <laughs> that always happens in my life. I always drop everything if there's a possibility I can perform. And I got a job um, as a dancer for a company in Tampa, Florida called Drip. I'm sorry, Orlando, Florida called Drip where you dance and paint water and sand. And I got hired on as a principal dancer. And I was like, cool, peace. I'm back in performing. Well, with the path you're on in burlesque and performing, let's not drop this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> let's continue on this path. I am. I, I fully am. I'm so excited. I'm working on, on so many new acts right now and uh, I'm scheduled to perform this week. So I, I can't wait to keep going. So for anybody in the Chicago area or anybody that's going to be traveling there, where are they going to see you? Okay. So you guys are going to see me. Um, it, it changes every week, which is fun and exciting for me. Um, but <laughs> this week you would catch me at Bordell Chicago, which is a wonderful speakeasy um, in, uh, in the city. 
or you guys can catch me with the Vaudettes, which is the dance group that I'm a part of, um, which is pretty badass. We're like a rock and roll sexy nice. troop. Yeah, for sure. Let's let's take this way back. At what point in your life, at what age did you realize just how famous your father was? Oh my God. You know what? That's a hard question because I've always just been used to, I I don't know, just wrestling and going backstage to shows and hearing his name being booed or chant or, or chanted, depending on what storyline we're in. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think I really realized when we were in El Paso for a show and it was honestly just a house show, Chris, but like when people were throwing beer at my dad and when they were throwing shit in the ring and me and my family were in the ring, like we were in the ring with him and people were throwing stuff because they hated him so much. And I was like, wow, that's in his crazy. hometown. Yeah. Oh no. Like some dude was an asshole. Like, like, and he was just being like, I think it was, El pa it must've been El Paso because we were in the ring with him, but like someone threw beer at him and like, but the fact that the crowd, it was one asshole that did it. And then like every, everyone in the audience like gathered behind him. It was like, and was just, I don't know, like the way my dad could um, move the crowds was insane. And, uh, and that was just a house show. And I was just like, man, dad's like legit. He's wow. insane. But How even then I, Oh, I think it was like 12. I was like 12. Wow. That. <laughs> that's, that's quite an experience when you're 12. Yeah. I was just like, hmm. like that, that's, that's not something, you know, maybe my other friend's dads, uh, had happened <laughs> so, do you remember what your so first proud. memory of wrestling would have been, would it be, would it be WCW? I, I mean, my first wrestling memory was like, I loved my dad's costumes when he came up. I like, I loved his gear. And so I was always, I think it was when he was tagging with Art Bar, um, God, way back before WCW. I, I don't even know what promotion he was in. Um, but like, it was when him and they were the Gringos Locos, I believe. And they had the American flags, um, like the really bedazzled, like American flag jackets. And uh, that's my first wrestling memory, just playing in his gear and getting to run around the ring um, with him. But um, I mean, other than that, I would have to say my first biggest wrestling memory was when I got to be in the ring and I got to do segments on SmackDown with my mom and dad. That's like huge memories for me. Did you at any point during that go, yeah, I want to do this for a living? You know what? I... Um, I had such low self-esteem as a child. And I think when, with watching wrestling, especially the women's wrestling, when my dad was in it and, you know, in the nineties and eighties, I was just like, oh, there's no way I'm beautiful enough to do this. Or there's no way I'm going to be thin enough or talented enough to be able to even be considered to, to do this at all. And then, um, of course that all changed the older I got and, uh, it, I blossomed, if you will. And, um, and then of course, some of the promoters took notice of me. It was like, yeah, let's give her a tryout. Mm. And, then, and then what was your first match that you had? How old were you? Oh my God. Uh, the first match I had, um, well, televised was, was with AJ Lee, like freaking AJ. Mm. Um, and that was on Bright House Network TV and FCW in the training ground for, um, for NXT. So <laughs> Um, she took real good care of me. I am so fortunate that, um, you know, AJ led me through that match. So yeah. it was fantastic. <laughs> I just can't believe that like you didn't, you weren't ever able to be on like national TV with this. I, I, you know what? Me, me neither. I, I think, no, I don't mean that in like a conceited way. I think yeah. I was just, I was being told I was doing a good job and like, and I knew my wrestling was not, um, as strong as my promo skills. I I'm aware of that. Yeah. And, um, and that's okay. Cause I was just like, I loved the promo aspect of it. I loved the mic work and I loved the pageantry of it all. And I liked the acting and don't get me wrong. Wrestling is super fun, but like, did I have that natural ability that my dad had? Mm, maybe I had some of it, but like not yeah. to the extent that he had, my dad was a freak it's insane um and so and he also grew up with a wrestling ring in his backyard so sure who yeah. was your dad to you when you were growing up this is always a loaded question i think people um i don't mean to break anyone's heart or to but i'm gonna be real and i'm gonna be honest my dad scared the shit out of me when i was growing up if i'm being honest like we 
and it's no surprise. Like people know, like he struggled with alcohol and he struggled with drugs. And I think unfortunately growing up until I was about 12, 13, that was all I saw of him. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it's a complicated relationship I had with my dad and I didn't truly get to know him until I was 13, 14, 15. And he passed when I was 15. Yeah. So, do, yeah. do you think, and I'm not a therapist at all, but do you think <laughs> that that factors into some of the issues that you had later on in life? Absolutely. Oh my God. <laughs> um, it was funny when I was talking to my psychiatrist, like for the first time, ever, I've never seen a psychiatrist before. And he was like, so why are you here today? And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I'm, I'm a little angry. And he was like, why? And I'm like, okay, like, where do you want me to start? And so, um, I think just between growing up in that kind of household and then also going through things publicly, like when my dad died, we went through that publicly in front of everybody. And that's a really hard thing. And going to school and being like, oh yeah, you're, you're the chick whose dad died. Right. And I'm like, (sighs) yeah. And like, um, I don't know, there, there's, a lot of pressure and I love my family, but also the Guerrero's are batch crazy. And we are also like, we have very high expectations of everyone in our family and uh, they're not shy to let us know. So there, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot, I had sure. to but I think I definitely have to, I idolize my father, but then I'm also very angry um, in a lot of ways. And I have to work through that all Still? the time. Yeah. I think there is um, when, he passed away. Like, um, of course he did not know. We didn't know he was going to pass away that young and, yeah. uh, left a shit show in the wake of all of that. And, um, and I'm, you know, I wish I had a more steady father figure when I was growing up and, you know, we were also, we grew up highly religious to where like, it was almost, um, traumatic in a way. Yeah. a lot. And I think my dad clung to his religion. I, he clung to it because it really helped him get better. It really, truly did. But I think growing up in that household of it being so strict, um, was difficult. I mean, his, his road to recovery was very public and he, he seemed like he was on the right path, but his body wasn't on that same path with him. It, he, um, toward the end, I remember him being constantly in pain, <clears throat> like constantly, oh. he couldn't sleep. He, you know, he would take micro naps throughout the day and, um, and yeah, he wasn't doing well. And I mean, and dad, dad lived hard, you know, he, he, uh, he rocked out pretty hard, um, you know, in the eighties and nineties, you know, it was that sex, drugs and wrestling, you know, it was, it was all that at that time. And, um, and also like, I mean, look at his matches. I mean, he was just so he had, he did a lot of really amazing and traumatizing things to his body. And so, uh, I, I don't even want to know how many concussions he had um, yeah. and whatnot. So I'm very happy though that they take way better care of their wrestlers now. And uh, yeah, so. Did anyone in your family step in and become that father figure for you? You know, um, it was complicated. Uh, like, of course, Chavito has always been a rock for our fam- for especially for me and my sister. We always knew we could talk to him. Um, but when my father died, my mom needed stability of her own and, um, and she needed to move to El Paso to be around something familiar. And I think, um, we lost a lot of touch with, um, the Guerreros because they were upset by that. And so it was very difficult for us as kids too, because we were like, I don't know what's happening. I just, uh, I don't know what's happening. Like our whole world just got uprooted and my mom, handled it like such a G she's such a badass, and she was dealing with family drama and all kinds of, um, just so she was dealing with so much. And, you know, my mom didn't have a college degree. She didn't have a career path when my dad died and she had to not only handle us and handle the publicity of it all, but she also had to figure out a way we were going to eat. And, and then so, she became one of the greatest heels of that era. <laughs> like I said, mom is a G. She, she is the coolest woman I know. And I'm so blessed. She's my mom and she's my example. She is the polar opposite in real life of the character that she plays on TV. <laughs> I love when people are like, she's so nice. And I'm like, yeah, she's nice. <laughs> like, she's she's the, not-, but not just nice. She's like the nicest. 
she is. Thank you. I, I agree. She, she's this, uh, it's crazy how she turns it on. And like, we, we like will forever be so grateful for, um, Dusty Rhodes. Like Dusty Rhodes was huge in her, um, metamorphosis and into Vicky Guerrero that we know her now. And even then I, I was so blessed to be able to train with Dusty as well. And so it's just, uh, mom, mom's awesome. I'm so, I'm so fucking proud of her. So proud of her. And knowing her, like I know her now, it's funny to see like these Karen memes about your mom. Like, <laughs> I have to say the Karen haircut. I'm like, oh shit, she has it. <laughs> I never realized it. Uh, Cause she's always rocked it. She's always like, looks so good with it. I but, can't imagine her with another haircut. Oh my God. But she is like, she's the Karen of like WWE or like AEW now. Like she, she's that woman and she infuriates people and i love it i'm so proud of her she is so so good at it she's so good yes absolutely do you remember how you found out that your dad passed away yeah um i do uh i was woken up by um my dad's sister linda um and my cousins and we were all very close um at the time and i'm still you know close with my cousins but um yeah, they, they woke us up and I, I don't know, I've never had anyone like truly like pass away, um, until that, until that day. And yeah, they woke us up and brought us all out in the living room. And I remember it was a beautiful day and, uh, they told us what happened. And, um, I think they told me separately from my sister. I remember they pulled me aside and told me separately because I remember mom wasn't there either. I think she, she was upstairs just completely distraught. Um, yeah, it was a terrible day. Yeah. What does your sister do now, by the way? (laughs) My sister, um, she's also a dancer, uh, look at you guys dancer, but she's a, she's a highly talented, um, dancer and she does like hip hop and she does like the I don't know if you've seen like the heels, like when people dance in heels like that, my sister is so good at it. And so she does that. And she's also, um, she works for a ophthalmologist, um, by day she's in, uh, she does like the reception at an ophthalmology place. And then at night she's a dancer. Look at you guys. Wow. (laughs) We got rhythm. The Guerreros have rhythm. Maybe not dad, (laughs) but, but me and my sister do. Yeah. (laughs) And my mom was a dancer too. She was actually a professional dancer before everything it all makes sense now (laughs) yes we got our moves from mom for sure (laughs) how much was chris benoit in your life after eddie passed away so wow i've never had anyone ask me that um well because i know that like he they were so close oh yes no and i I, know that eddie's death really affected him it did um you know what chris and um i i I think I lumped Chris and Ray together so much just because they really, they did look after us a lot um, after he died and, you know, people would check in and, you know, and we would go to the shows. I mean, it was so hard. It's so hard to remember like immediately right after that time. I think we were all just in a fog. Um, But I remember all all I remember really when it comes to like Chris and, um, and Nancy um, and, Nancy, Chris's wife was, we were more close with her. Um, just, you know, Nancy gave me all of her costume jewelry when she was, you know, um, when she was woman and she gave me a whole trunk of like all of her, all of her things she wore on TV. And she was just the most lovely woman ever. And, um, you know, I remember her and my mom talked a lot after my dad died. And so that's the main memory I remember. And I turned 16 that next year. And, um, all of the boys that my dad knew, like I know Booker T and Charmel and Ray, and like, they all sent just beautiful gifts to me on my 16th birthday. Cause they were just like, I think they were just like, shit, it sucks, yeah. you know, but, um, and they're even still great friends to us today. And I know I, if I was ever in trouble, I know I could call, you know, um, any of the guys my dad had relationships with and I love that. they'd welcome us. Did you watch the tribute show at night on raw? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Um, we had a whole family, um, we, all the family came over and we watched it and, uh, yeah, I, I still can't watch it. Like again, I think it's just, it, it, it's such a mess. Uh, I, we were such a mess. Um, that's what I remember, but it was beautiful. And, um, you know, just seeing my dad's friends crying and remembering him. It's hard. Yeah. 
But I mean, it's also made you into the person, the strong woman that you are now. From Chris. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Thank you me. are a married woman. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but thank you. It, it did make me strong. And um, I think that's also something that why wrestling is very triggering for me sometimes because yeah. I'm reliving my trauma all the time. Like with every appearance and whatnot, people want to talk about dad. And I, I love talking about my father. I love remembering him. That's how he stays alive. I think when I'm doing a lot of wrestling stuff, it's like, like yeah. it can, it can get, it can get hard. Cause I still mourn him. Like whenever you lose somebody, they're always, you never, you're never better. You know, it's yeah. just like the pain, the pain is like just spread out. You know what I mean? And so um, I think that's why it can be triggering sometimes too. Yeah. I mean, there's some quote and I'm just, I'm going to paraphrase, but it's, it's, you don't get over grief. You just learn to live with it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's, yeah, I think that's pretty accurate for the people in my life that I've lost, but, and I can completely understand mm-hmm. how, thank you for being so open about sharing these memories because right. and there's a lot of people that are watching this right now that are probably crying, listening to these memories. And I know that, you know, it breaks my heart hearing these stories. So thank you for being so open with all this. Oh, absolutely. Dad was, even though I have anger and there's things to work through with me and my father's relationship, he was also the coolest dude ever. Like when he was sober and he was healthy. Oh my God. He did the coolest stuff as a dad, like the cool, like the coolest stuff. Like, and I just like, I don't know if I'm going to be a parent one day, but I hope I can be that version of my dad to my kids. All right. Tell me your favorite story about your dad. (laughs) It was just, um, so I'm kind of goofy and I think I get it from him. Um, and he would just do random acts of kindness, um, all the time. Like one day I was at step team practice and, um, and he just brought like a shitload of McDonald's burgers for everybody. And like, just cause he was excited that he could be home to see me at a practice. And like one day he saw me and the kids outside were bored like we were just sitting around just like, I don't know, um, just doing shit fuck all. And he went out to Target and bought a bunch of water guns, like a bunch of bunch of water guns, like those little ones. And um, of course he got himself a super soaker. <laughs> um, but he came home and was like, here you go, kids. And we were like, whoa. And it turned into like this whole like battle on like battle right in front of our house of water guns and of course he came out with super soaker and completely smoked all of us but he would do things like that all the time and he had the biggest biggest heart and um when my dad was well he was the best person to talk to and he was I think not only my spiritual advisor but I think a lot of the guys would attest like my dad was just the guy to talk to in the locker room so who was your mom to you when you were growing up she was, um, you know what? It's hard. Like my mom, uh, growing up from like 12 to now, like my mom was my best friend and very, we were very close. And, um, she, she has mentioned before, like, I'm just like my dad, um, in all the good ways and bad, <laughs> um, me and my dad are a little extreme. Um, but you know, she was always, so strong. Um, I think when I was younger, it was hard because we were in a house that was very difficult to navigate. Um, mom was constantly kind of cleaning up after my dad and just trying to get through every day. Um, but you know, when my dad passed, it did bring me and her very close and Mm -hmm. I tell her everything. And she's my biggest cheerleader, even when I do things like when we were on Chris Jericho's rock and wrestling rager last year, she was our biggest fan because uh, the Vaudettes were on cruise and it was my first time kind of debuting to the wrestling community. Like, oh yeah, Shaw does this super sexy um, rock and roll dance. And she was like, I'm so proud of you. You're doing so great. Yeah. And so she, super I can proud. see why a mom might not want to watch that. <laughs> well, poor, poor Chris Jericho. He was just like, it's awesome. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
oh god yeah um my all my my like my wrestling uncles um like like chris jericho's a wrestling uncle i you know his uncle chris and um like um got um adam birch uh is another um i'm sorry joey mercury uh is another wrestling uncle that i'm very close with and so they're like we're so proud of you i can't watch for very long though (laughs) so yeah (laughs) are you guys going back on the cruise this year oh yeah Oh yeah, it's gonna be lit. <laughs> We're so well, fingers excited. Crossed. I mean, October. Fingers crossed in this COVID world. I mean, it's it's in Florida, yeah. so it should be fine. But who knows? Yeah, well, we're we're we're, ha- we're really hoping um, it'll happen in October because October spooky season and the vods are pretty spooky. So we're hoping <laughs> for something cool like that. But I mean, Chris Jericho is like. I mean, this cruise has been just so amazing for so many people um, that if it, if it got pushed back, the party would still like rock on. We would just yeah. wait, you know, wait until it comes time for everybody to be safe and rock out together. You have so much personality and so much charisma that just like jumps through the screen. I love this. True. <laughs> I try. I don't know. <laughs> and it like, it totally comes out. If anybody hasn't seen your ring announcing, it totally comes out. Like you, you <laughs> own you. it as a ring announcer. I love ring announcing. I have the best seat in the house. I, I love it. Um, and I love that I get to announce my friends. Um, so I, if you ever can catch any outtakes from wow, um, definitely, uh, check out some outtakes from wow, because Thunder Rosa really likes to fuck with me royally (laughs) in the ring. I, one time she licked me from my chin all the way to my forehead in the middle of, uh, right, right. As I'm announcing her. So, wow. Um, fun times. <laughs> you also did some ring announcing with AEW. I did. I did. I really, um, I still get nervous thinking about it. I was very honored that Brandy um, reached out to me and uh, had me come in and do the women's tournament. It was very cool. I feel like you should be back in AEW doing some more stuff like that. I would love to. I would absolutely love, I, I fully, um, AEW had a very different vibe um, than I've ever been used to. I think they're, and I'm, I'm sure we've all heard it like where it's just, um, in WWE, you mind your piece and your cues, and then you mind them again and again and again, the whole time you're just, you're it's, um, you know, and it's, it's the top company, you know what I mean? Like we, everyone wants to be on their best behavior and everyone wants to, you know, have opportunity there. Um, and AEW is amazing though. I don't know. Everybody just, it was like a big reunion. I got to like be with the people that I used to train with. And um, it, it's just a, a very welcoming environment there. I, I felt very privileged to be there. So when you're doing stuff like ring announcing, that's not triggering for you. No, I love it. I Because I okay. know, I think I have so much confidence in what I do on the mic. And I have so much confidence with, um, with all of that. I think I, I'm just like, this is my lane. This is my yeah. lane. And so I just feel like really good and empowered and um, like I have a lot more to learn from it. And I'm so think I think I loved also being at AEW because not only did I have Brandy there, but I had Justin Roberts um, and so I know you've had him uh, on the show and uh, the fact that I was able to learn from him. Yeah. What, what did what specifically did you learn from Justin? Because I've done some ring announcing myself. He dropped some massive tips to me, and I went, oh, I never thought about it that way. Oh my God. Well, you know what? He kind of blew my mind a little bit because once again, when in WWE and when I was learning to ring announce initially, I did it through FCW and NXT. Um, they they very much like things done a certain way there, um, depending on who your producer is. And so Justin blew my mind when, um, I went to AEW. I was like, okay, how do you want this worded? And like, how, how, um, how exactly do you guys like to do things? And he was like, you make your choice, you know what you're doing. And I'm like, <gasps> I'm not used to not being micromanaged. So I, yeah. I think, um, he, he just gave me confidence. Honestly, he was just like, I have faith in you with what you want to do. And, um, he also, uh, I had to do a wild line at one point, um, for one of the announcements I made, it was just a little funky. And they were like, yeah, let's just run it again. And I think I was having a panic attack because I was like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. Oh my God, I'm going to get my ass beat in the back. And he was like, no, it's not a big deal. Just do a wild line. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not in trouble. And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And so I don't know, he just calmed me down and he just, um, he just gave me the confidence I needed to, you know, have faith in what I was doing. I sat in on the very first production meeting for Dynamite because I was on that first episode. And I remember when they were reading through the 
the rundown for that night, they went, all right, so Justin Roberts, you're our master of ceremonies. You go out there, do your thing. And that was the guidance. And I was like, oh my gosh. It's and insane. he just kind of nodded his head. And of course that night he went out in Washington, DC and did his thing. It's insane though. I, I, and I think I've gotten a lot of feedback too from, you know, just talking to my friends that wrestle on the show and they're just like, yeah, they like, it's a lot like, they do, um, they take into account what uh, the talent has to say and what they want to do as well. And so um, that's very cool. Very, very cool. I hope I can work for them again. And I'm sure that you will. It's just a matter of time. Yes. And whenever the next women's tournament is, that'll be you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Or, or when, you know, like a lackey or she needs a personal <laughs> ring announcer. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> that, there you go. It's perfect. Oh, that, I mean, I, I, Vicky I, Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, someone that works there, you know, someone very close to you that works there. So I think you could probably make this happen. I will say though, like Justin Roberts uh, did tease me pretty hard because uh, I did get to announce my mom at one point during the tournament. And he is like, well, if I have ever heard a biased announcement. <laughs> How much I did you roll the game. R's in your last oh, name? Yeah, Rero. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was all over it. And come <laughs> on, I got to go home with her at the end of the night. I can't botch that. Is Guerrero still your legal last name? It is. Okay. So are you, is it just your legal last name or are you hyphenated or what is it? No, it's just my legal last name. Uh, my husband, he was like, if my last name was Guerrero, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> so I was like, well, somebody needs to fix your Wikipedia then. They do. And what picture is that? What picture is that? I don't know who chooses the pictures. I'm like, I do wow. all of these photography shoots every month. And I'm like, and that's the picture. Somebody watching this is going to be a Wikipedia editor. So we're going to get this fixed up. Okay. Please help me. Please yeah. help me. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's a matter of someone going in and typing a few things. It'll take 10 seconds. Yeah. But I mean, it's, a, I, you know, what though I was fully planning on taking my husband's last name, uh, Ray Walt. Um, and that I is just, not nearly as fun as Guerrero. Ray Walt. Yeah, no. Um, but like, it's, it's a good solid last name. Um, but he's a good yeah, man. Just, he is a good man. And he's, um, he actually, so it's funny when me and him got together, like he, he's was way more of, um, just, I guess a modern man, I think than um, I was, you know, kind of, used to I think I, I grew up in a very machismo house you know where the man is the head of the house and stuff like that and uh and when I met my husband he was like oh no this is a partnership you can do whatever you want and I'm like I'm not used to this this is hard I have to rewire my brain right now but um so he uh he's amazing I feel very privileged that I get well, to I'm, bunk I'm, with him and hang out with him I'm curious to know the first time you guys met so um, we met at FCW, um, and I remember he came in, and it, I think it was promo day, um, or it was, I don't know. I just knew I noticed him, and he was a very pale dude. And I was like, ugh, don't they know we tan here? Anyway. <laughs> and I was like, such a bitch. I was like, I thought I was hot shit back then. And, um, and I was just like, ew, who is he? And then, um, I remember being impressed with him the first time during promo day and he like played guitar and did a promo at the same time. And I was super impressed with him. Um, he won you time, over with the guitar. He did. He, he serenaded me. Um, no, I'm just kidding. He didn't serenade me, but uh, I remember being very his promo skills were lit and, um, but we didn't talk that much. I was dating somebody else the first time I met him. Um, and the second time around when I went back to the performance center was when we hit it off. We actually lived in the same apartment complex. He was didn't, very, doesn't uh, everybody live in that apartment complex. <laughs> <laughs> I've it been in that apartment like complex. That. Yeah. The, the sun key or Camden, which Camden are you at? Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he was very helpful when he found out I lived in that apartment complex. He was like, oh. yeah, if you need, uh, me to move anything or, uh, you know, put something up for you. I'm like, I got it. But <laughs> eventually he won me over. And, uh, what was yeah. your first official date then? <laughs> um, we were flirting over text for a couple of weeks. And then I remember we were talking about true blood. And I was super bummed out because I finished season four and I didn't have the DVD box set for season five. God, I'm old. Um, anyway, and so I just, uh, he was like, well, I have 
the box set for season Ooh. five. And uh, I just walked on over and we didn't watch it at all and talked for eight hours. And um, we uh, we hit it off. We, we were inseparable after that. And the rest is history. The rest is history. And you've been together. <laughs> you've been married six years now. Uh, we yeah. Oh, oh, Lord, I can't. We've been together seven years total for sure. Five years married. Okay. So, I'm, I'm, sure. Yeah, I might, I might did the ra- math wrong there. Maybe five. I don't and know, Chris. I honestly, you're probably right. I'm the worst. I, I'm the. He's better at keeping dates. I'm not the date person. Yeah, I'm sure you know what year you were married in, right? 2013. I think. I don't think that's correct. I don't think that's right. 16. 2016. Oh my God, I am gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble when this comes out. He's going to All right. Well, then you got it right now. So that means five years. You've been married for five years. You were right. I was wrong. Perfect. You nailed it. Sure. You're really helping me out right now. No, it's true. <laughs> you, you got it. January something, right? Yeah. I married him. It's it's fine. We're, we're, we're here. We're still married. We're, like I said, it. the rest is history. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't... <laughs> I think I measure my marriage on when we got our pets. So I'm like, okay, yeah. Like 2017 was when we got this cat. 2018 was when we got this cat. And then, so I go off the animals. So. <laughs> Are you as obsessed with burlesque as Matt is with whiskey? Ooh, probably. We're, even though he has a full closet for his. Oh, he showed us his closet. Where's my closet? Where's my closet, Chris? i uh, <laughs> Anyway, but no, I'm sure yeah. you have quite the burlesque costume closet somewhere. Oh, I sure do. I mean, we're working on, uh, we're working on all. Kinds oh of my stuff goodness. Right we're getting a costume so, change here. We're working on all kinds of, this is stuff. a whole different vibe right now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, no, but he, uh, I'm so proud of him with what he has done with his whiskey. Um, not only from the wrestling with whiskey, Patreon and his YouTube channel and everything like that, but, um, God, he really does love it. And it's, and honestly, it's the hottest thing when I kiss him and he has bourbon breath. I'm like, oh yeah, it's hot. Like legit. Wow. I'm being very honest. Really? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Is and bourbon so your drink as well? No, I'm, um, I'm a bubbles bitch. So I, anything with bubbles, I, I <laughs> so I'm that, I'm that girl. I'm like, I'll have a Prosecco. That's me. Oh, I, my, <laughs> my head immediately went to White Claw when you said bubbles. <laughs> You're not wrong. It just kind of depends on where the night's going. <laughs> oh, but have you had a high noon yet? Ooh, yes. 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 What's your flavor? What's your flavor? The pineapple high noon is so good. You? Yeah. Pineapple's pretty solid. I like the watermelon too. The fact that high noon is actually vodka, like it's actually a vodka drink, whereas White Claw is like the malt liquor drink. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, what a better drink to be drinking. <laughs> I honestly, I really, I'm also a bartender here in Chicago and, uh, yeah, we have all the high noons, all the white claws, um, freshy, the cur- now everybody has a seltzer. Everybody has a seltzer. Um, and Matt does make fun of me every time I have one. He's oh, like, really? well, I mean, yeah, well, Matt's like a hardcore, like telling he's you a the prude. Of, yeah. Oh, he's a whiskey prude. It's fine. Like, he's a whiskey <laughs> connoisseur. Sure. You're, very, you're a lot nicer about it than, than I am. <laughs> I'm not married to the guy. <laughs> I'm like, you're such a snob. But, uh, but even though I do like a good E.H. Taylor neat, that's like one of the things I'll sip. So mm. perhaps yeah. you should be Matt's personal ring announcer on an indie booking. I mean, I would. I would I honestly I would love to travel with my husband and do do things. I would probably be open to wrestle if he was on just something about like an intergender match? Oh yeah, I think that would be absolutely fun. I love training with my husband. Like it's we have so much fun together. And it's so weird because we were actually thinking we were like, man, when we were at FCW, me and him never rolled around. I think one time we had to do a drill together. And uh other than that, we never wrestled until recently. Would he be open to having a match against you? Oh, yeah, I think you would. I mean, I it sounds like you'd be open to that. I think yeah, I would have a lot of fun. I think it would be a great time. So uh, you never know. You never know. I know right now I'm taking time to work through my shit. And so, um, and I, I'm 
down to do wrestling things, um, I guess here and there for right now as I'm healing. But um, I believe me, I would love to. I've been I've been trying to wrestle. Like I think this is my third attempt at trying to really wrestle, and um, maybe one day it can happen. But for right now, I understand. I'm like mental health is first, and uh, but down the line. I would that, love to that recommend. takes that takes so much self-awareness to be able to go I've got stuff I got to work on so I'm going to work on that first thanks Chris I'm trying it, it's hard but you know what one day at a time so. sure it's I mean the hardest part though must probably be admitting like I've got to work on this because a lot of people go their entire lives and never do yeah being self-aware is a great gift and it's also like you're aware <laughs> so yeah. you're like yeah. Um, but you know, we're, we're doing it one day at a time and now I have help. I have a great support system. So, yeah. and, and even my husband, he was like, I think you need time. And he was like, I think you need to just get some space from wrestling. And, yeah. um, and I am, so it'll be good, but I'm, I'm ready to announce. I'm ready to get back out there. I'm ready right, for so a while you're, to so come you're, back. T- you're taking bookings when it comes to managing or announcing. So how can people reach out to you? My booking email, booking.shawguerrero at gmail.com. Or, I mean, I'm on Instagram all the time. So um, if, you, if you've ever DM'd me, I'm sorry. DMs are scary. Um, it's a scary <laughs> place. So please use my booking email. Like, I will, re- I will get back to you that day. So booking.shawguerrero at gmail. But no, guys, no creepy messages, okay? Like legitimate booking e- e- emails here, okay? Yes, please. Le- legitimate inquiries only, please. Yeah. That's... And no pictures. No matter how much you say this is a picture of your cat, I'm not going to open it. I've yeah. learned the hard way. <laughs> 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 it is not your cat, sir. I'm, I guarantee it's probably not your cat. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Me too. You are awesome. You are so easy to talk to. I'm so happy. Like I got to, I get to be with the rest of my family now and be like, oh yeah, me and Chris are cool. Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that we were able to do this. I can't wait to see you in person. Absolutely. I was about to say, we need to get, um, I saw like I was, you know, going through your YouTube and everything and I see you're quite the adventurer. Mm. So when you're in Chicago, I have to teach you how to eat fire. I could, you think I could do that? Absolutely. I um, think I can teach you at least how to do some fire tricks. I'm 100% in. It's a date. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to get some fire and I'll, I'll make sure you don't catch on fire unless you want to in certain places. I'm but, not going to burn my mouth, am I? I mean, you can't f- play with fire and not get burned. I mean, you are going to do it with Latina heat. You're going to get burned one way or another. I don't like but this anymore. <laughs> I will make sure you're safe. It will be a light burn, like a light scalding. You'll be fine. Okay, good. No, I I'm, <laughs> I, I run towards the things that scare me. So well, I saw you were in like water with an alligator. So I think yeah. I don't, I mean, the fire oh, might be pretty scary. Casper but. was super friendly. You could do that. Anyone could do that. In fact, yeah. next time you're in the Miami area. I will set you up with my friend, Chris Gillette, who has these underwater gator tours and you should swim with Casper as well. Okay. Well, me and Casper will have a date once we, once we get our fire date and it'll be good. Yeah. No, I run towards the things that scare me. So yes, I will try to, no, I will, I won't try. I'm going to do this. Absolutely. Fire, spit fire, whatever, whatever we're doing with fire. You're going to be so great. It's going to be awesome. I'm so (laughs) excited about this. Well, you know that uh, you know that I end every interview talking about gratitude because if you can be grateful, you'll live a great life. So, Shaw, what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? I am grateful for my husband. I am grateful for my family, and I am grateful. Let's see, I'm grateful for the hard times because mm. wouldn't be here without them, and you know we don't get molded and shaped into who we are without them. So I am grateful for all of them. So good. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for having me on your iconic show. Super appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That is so kind. Thank you. True, man.